Well, hello, friends. This is Pastor Ralph Thompson, and this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to the virtual campus of Columbia Drive, The Drive. And today we celebrate Laity Sunday. Several of our laity will lead us in worship today, and I'm excited about what God is going to do. So let's prepare to worship God in spirit and in truth. Good morning. The Lord is so faithful Amen. to us. Amen. All his promises come. He will bring them to pass. All right. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. For your Thank faithfulness. You, faithful. Smith, and this is Columbia Drive Network News for Sunday, October 25th, 2020. I would like to begin with a word of encouragement and a little spiritual vitamin of sorts coming from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 31 and verse 6, and it reads, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them, for the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. 
I would also like to take this opportunity to wish everyone with a birthday in the month of October a very happy birthday. Also, if you are fortunate enough to tie the knot in the month of October, I would also like to wish you a happy anniversary. Now on to this week's announcements. Virtual worship at the drive begins Sunday at 10 a.m. You can join us on Facebook or on our CDUMC YouTube channel. For more information, go to our website at www.cdumc.org. That is www.cdumc.org. Virtual Sunday School is each Sunday at 9 a.m. The lesson for this week was Love Never Fails. Please join Mr. Donald Mason for an inspiring lesson each Sunday. After church, please join us in the CDUMC virtual lobby. It provides us an excellent opportunity to meet, greet, and fellowship while our members are away from the physical church. Take some time, drop in for a quick visit, or just say hi. We would love to see you there. That's Sundays from 11 o'clock to 11.30 a.m. See you there. Columbia Drive, hello, have you voted? We are now down to only nine days away before Election Day. If you have not done so already, on Tuesday, November 3rd, please make sure that your voice is heard. If you want to do it sooner, the last day for early voting is this Friday, October 30th. And on that same day, on October 30th, right after you go early vote, is our Kids of the Kingdom Fall Festival. Festivities begin at 6 p.m. Bring your own meals and lawn chairs. However, popcorn and sweet treats will be provided. If you have a costume, please wear it. We'll be having a costume contest that I definitely plan to win. Um, also, donations are being accepted for treats. If you would like to donate, please contact Sierra Phillips at sierrafill2 at gmail.com. That is Sierra, C-I-E-R-A, Phil, P-H-I-L-L, to at gmail.com. Thank you in advance for your kindness and generosity. And speaking of kindness and generosity, it is about that time, the time for giving. Each week you do so much to help out our church ministry by sharing with us your generous gifts. And we want to just say thank you, but we still need more. God loves a cheerful giver, and I mean loves a cheerful giver. And now we ask each of you to reach into your wallets and purses to give to the ministry of God. You can give via text, by email, or by visiting our website at www.cdumc.org. The information is provided below. Thank you again for your wonderful gifts, and this has been your CDNN Virtual Update.
Chaplain Lawrence. And go ahead and have a wonderful day. And let's bow our, wor- our head for a word of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we come to you today. Father, we just thank you for another day. God, I stand before you and I stand on behalf of each and every person under the sound of my voice. God, I ask that you would heal every place where they hurt, oh God. Father, we ask that you would heal this nation, oh God. We have an election coming up. We ask that you would just guide the hands of everyone that goes into the polls, oh God. Father, we thank you that you supply all our needs according to your riches and glory. And God, we thank you that everyone will have food on their table under the sound of my voice. They will have their needs met under the sound of my voice. And Father, we thank you that your word is a healing word. Father, your word says, by your stripes, we are already healed. So God, we come to you and we say we need you now, God. We need healing now, oh God. We need provision now, oh God. But most of all, God, we need your love. We need your love to take over in every area of this country, oh God, in every home. So God, we praise you now. Father, we thank you that you are a father that hears our voice and that you take hold of every situation. So God, I stand in the gap for those who can't stand in the gap for themselves. Those who are sick and shut in, oh God, I ask that you would heal their bodies, Father. Lord, we just thank you for each and every, we thank you for technology, God, that we can come across the United States, oh God, and bring a word to those that need to hear, oh God. For every young lady that hurts, oh God, I ask that you would touch her and heal her heart now. For every young man that feels that he has no purpose, oh God, I ask that today that you would give him purpose, Father. So God, we stand before you this day Father, we thank you for all that you will do, for all that you have done, oh God. And Father, we just praise you for all that you are. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And amen. Your desires revealed. 
revealed in me. I give myself to you. My life is not my own. Not my own. To you, Lord. To you, I belong. I belong. So I give myself. I give myself to you. Come on and help me say, My life, my life is not my own. I give myself away. Come on, right where you are, say it with us. I give myself away so you can use me. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Columbia Drive. So good to be with you this morning. Hope that you all are doing well. This morning, I find an honor and a privilege to bring the message to you. This morning I want to use as a text, the secret of true happiness. The secret of true happiness. Our scripture lesson as it's been read this morning comes from John 5, 1 through 9. 
And in summary, the text teaches us about a man who had been sick for 38 years. And Jesus asked him this one simple question. Do you want to be well? We all have challenges of our own. As children, we were either too tall or too short, too skinny or too fat. Someone was always smarter or faster or more popular. And even as adults, we are either too young, too old, too inexperienced or too overqualified, too busy or just too alone. Sometimes it's more serious. We carry the baggage of being abused in some unfair way. We worry about how to pay the bills. We grieve over the loss of someone, be it by death or divorce or estrangement. We agonize over a rebellious child who may be in a gang or doing drugs or maybe just hard-headed. Some of us even face the uncertainty of some physical, some chronic physical problem like heart disease or cancer. And even in this present day, we have to be worried about the pandemic and COVID and the mental stability and health of our nation's leader. In life, we all experience disappointments and failures which are often beyond our own control as we get frustrated and impatient and angry at the way that life has treated us. This oftentimes leads us to being bitter, resentful. There are some of us who appear to have it all together on the outside, but on, on the inside we know that something's missing. Maybe we can't exactly put our finger on it, but we know that something's wrong. Well, this morning I'd like to give you some medicine. This morning I would like to give you three pills, three pills that I think can help you change your life. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, it's me, Lord. Uh, I come right now asking you to hide me behind the cross. Let you increase and me decrease so that your people can hear the word from you. Lord, this prayer and all others we ask in your son's Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So pill number one, find somebody and, and, and tell them it's your attitude. It's your attitude. Now, here's the setting. Jesus found this man by a pool in Bethesda. Bethesda is Hebrew for house of mercy. This was a place where the blind and the lame and the paralyzed would, would be taken by their families. And they would, in this place, they would comfort each other. They would talk to each other. They would congregate with each other. They would keep each other company. And as the rich would walk by, they would give them coins and they would use those coins to purchase food from the food vendors. There was also a tradition here at Bethesda where when the water was stirred by the underground spring, the first person who could get to the water was healed. Now one day Jesus noticed this one particular man who with tears in his heart told Jesus that it took him too long to crawl to the water and that others would get there before him. But because of his humbleness, his attitude, his gentleness, his humbleness, his submissiveness, Jesus told him to pick up your mat and become useful again. This man for 38 long years had been unable to do things that most of us take for granted. That is where some of us are today. We are unable to go to work or to school or to the grocery store or come to church or even visit our family and friends, all because of this dreaded pandemic. Just like the man in the scripture lesson, we feel helpless and depressed and anxious wondering when a change is going to come. For us as Christians, being made useful is simple is as simple as 
standing up and picking up our mat and beginning to walk. We need to keep pushing to get to the other side of through. We need to realize that God is always with us, even in the midst of this pandemic. But secondly, we need to avoid blaming others for what has gone wrong in our life. Look at John 5 and 7, where the man responded to Jesus, Sir, I have no one to put me in the pool when the water is stirred up and someone else steps down ahead of me. Today we complain, the government won't do this or that. Which is true, but you also have a voice. You have an opportunity to make a difference. You have an opportunity to select someone to carry your agenda forward. So I ask you, have you voted? Are you active in your community? Have you tried to help the less fortunate? And then some of us complain that my family don't care about me. This could also be true. But I ask you, what have you done to show your family that you care about them? Still, there are others who complain that the church doesn't help me. In some cases, this could be true. The late President John F. Kennedy summed this up pretty well, where he stated, ask not what your country can do for you, but ask what you can do for your country. It's the same with church. Ask not what your church can do for you, but ask what you can do for your church. See, we are all guilty of walking around moping and sulking and worrying about what we have or don't have. Some of us are just sick to our souls and believe it, and believe it or not, that is the worst thing that can happen. It's worse than being physically sick. We walk around with this weight of sin called self-pity always thinking about self, always wondering and talking about the most important thing and person in the world, that's being that big M-I-E, me. Well, church, if you want to change your life, you got to first change your attitude. So instead of getting down on yourself when things go wrong, shake it up. Stir up the gift of God and stop wallowing in self-pity. Your healing is all about your attitude. Peel number two. Find somebody and tell them, stop being selfish. It's not all about you. If we look at Matthew 11, 1 through 6, here's the backdrop. John was thrown into prison by Herod because... He dared to speak out against Herod's relationship with his brother's wife. Now, perhaps John needed a little reassurance and comfort because he knew that most of those who opposed Herod were killed. We as Christians need to realize that not, we as Christians need to realize that even those with the greatest of faith become discouraged sometimes. See, John was expecting Jesus to be this fireball, this avenging angel, someone who would defend and, de and protect the holiness of God. John asked, are you the one who was to come or should we expect somebody else? Jesus was not at all what John expected. So why did John the Baptist ask this question? Well, I'll tell you, John asked this question because Jesus was not the kind of Messiah that he envisioned. Well, I want to tell you this morning that Jesus is not always what we expect. Sometimes your prayers don't get answered, at least not the way you think they should get answered. Sometimes you feel like Jesus has let you down. You get sick or a loved one gets sick or dies, or your dreams are shattered. 
Sometimes it seems that believing in Jesus is the start of your problem. Your beliefs get you fired. Your ethics get you put out of places that you used to go. Your ethics keep you from getting rich. Your religious outlook keeps you from having to count a boyfriend or girlfriend or husband or wife that you desire. Sometimes your faith in Jesus will be tested rather than blessed. And you will wonder if Jesus is really worth it. Do you think life will be easier just because you have confessed Christ? Sometimes life gets harder and more difficult as you struggle to do the right thing. Don't get mad or discouraged when it seems God is not answering your prayers. As old folks used to say, he may not come when you want him to, but he's always right on time. We become discouraged when we feel we have done all the so-called right things. Things like tithing and praying and going to church and helping others. And then we look up and God doesn't give us what we think we deserve. But if you look hard enough, you will see he has blessed us already more than we sometimes deserve. It is the same with this pandemic. Some of us are questioning God, asking, why would you bring such a dreaded plague upon us and couple that with the growing racial tensions and the president and the government not taking us as a nation of people serious? This is not a punishment. It's just God getting our attention because we have strayed away. Second Chronicles 7. And 14 also has the answer when Jesus told us, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then and only then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their land. We are a nation, we as a nation and as a people need a healing right now, Lord. Jesus knew we would fall short, so he ends with the warning. Blessed is the man who does not fall away on account of me. Jesus continually warns us that we are judged by the fruit that we bear. Anyone can call themselves a Christian, attend church every Sunday, memorize every Bible verse, learn all the hymns, Anyone can learn when to kneel or when to stand or when to get up and shout amen and hallelujah. But only a true Christian bears the fruit of a Christian. It's not about the baptismal certificate that you have. It's about your service to Christ. After all, after all, after all that he's done for us, we need to do for him unashamedly. We need to stop being selfish. It's not about you. Pill number three. How deep is your faith? How deep is your faith? Let's look at 2 Kings 7, verses 3 through 4. In this parable, we find four desperate leper men realizing they had nothing to lose. They were hated by their own people and hunted by the enemy. They had a hunch that sparked a glimmer of hope in their souls. And one said, it's possible the Syrians won't kill us. There's an outside chance they may even feed us. When you think that you're facing an impossible situation, you should open your eyes and see the glimmer of hope God is giving to lead you to freedom. What do you have to lose if you follow that ray of hope? It could lead you out of the spiritual, emotional, and financial swamp that you may find yourself in today. I have always taught my basketball teams this simple saying. If you think you've lost, 
you've already lost. See, this has everything to do with faith. At some point in all of our lives, our parents and grandparents, uncles and aunts, friends and, and foes may have told us this same saying in some shape, form, or fashion. So now these four men could have sat around in misery and complained and possibly just died. But instead, they decided to have faith. Well, what is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. Sometimes people look too much for a miracle instead of working hard and doing their part by staying in the word. I wonder if you got that miracle, would you still worship God or would you just wait until you needed another miracle? We do the most growing up when we have no one but God. If we never had adversity, we, would, we wouldn't grow. But we grow even more when we can watch others come up and not be jealous of them because they may have something we don't have. You know, that old jealousy bug. And we have really made it to the other side of through when we can pray unselfishly for others when they have success before you do. I mean, why get mad because your friend got the promotion and you didn't? You blocking your blessing. That job wasn't for you. Because what God has for you, he has for you. Now, this is what my grandmother would call going from milk to solid food. Refuse to live in misery and bitterness. So I ask you today, are you just going to sit around and die? Are you going to let the devil win? And I can hear the late great Reverend James Cleveland saying, where is your faith? Why is it when the dark clouds of despair are raging, we praise him day and night, but when times are good, we forget about him? We should praise him all day and all night, no matter what the circumstance is. So I have a question this morning. Will we praise him just as much when the pandemic is over? Will we praise him just as much when we have a new president? Will we praise him as much when there's less racial tension? Will we praise him as much when jobs are more readily available? Or is it simply only applicable during times of despair? Are you ready to be happy this morning? Because Jesus is ready for you to be. He does great things for us every day of our lives. And to receive his grace of mercy and the true secret of happiness, all we have to do is step out on faith and he will give us all the blessings we desire. As praises go up, blessings surely come down. See, we take health for granted until it's our own health. We take food for granted until we don't have any food. We take money for granted until we're broke. We even take our jobs for granted until we don't have a job anymore. Some of us have taken our spouses for granted until we don't have them anymore. Even our children take their parents for granted. But what is so amazing about God is what Paul said. God does not treat us as our sins deserve. That means even in our imperfections, God is still perfect with his grace and mercy. That's why we shouldn't get comfortable praising the Lord just when the Lord gives us something. See, if you learn how to praise him for who he is, 
you don't have to wait until the trouble comes to learn how to praise him. Let me say that again. If you learn how to praise him for who he is, you don't have to learn, you don't have to wait until trouble comes to learn how to praise him. Aren't you glad he doesn't treat us the way we treat each other? Here's my daily prayer, a prayer that I learned from a preacher a long time ago. I'm only one, but still I am one. I can't do everything, but I can do something. What I can do, I ought to do. And what I ought to do, by the grace of God, I will do. This has been a word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, friends, I pray that today has been a blessing to you. I thanks to Brother Charles Allen for a wonderful word from the Lord. Let us now look to the Lord for benediction. Would you receive this parting blessing? Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever.
Thank you for worshiping with us here at the Columbia Drive. We are truly delighted that you chose to join us this morning. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe to our channel. Also, like us on Facebook at CDUMC Decatur. For all upcoming events this week, be sure to check out our website, cdumc.org, as we look forward to not only worshiping with you on Sunday, but all throughout the week. Be blessed, stay safe, and remember, go, grow, show.